Okay, this is the July 12th um, Town of Groton Conservation Commission. My name is Bruce Lofgren from the Office of Planning and Development Services. The chair of the meeting is Larry Dunn. Um, for anyone participating remotely, you can speak under the public communications portion of the agenda by raising your virtual hand. Um, and with that, um, Larry, if you want to take the role and um, start the meeting. All right, let's begin. I don't see any other attendees other than ourselves. Uh, so uh, we'll call the roll. Larry Dunn, Chair. Kristen? Kristen Estante, member. Bray. Bray Rafferty, Vice Chair. Ann. Ann Schmidt, member. And Tom. Uh, Tom Olson, now uh, member. All right. Uh, First order of business. Whoop. And, and Michelle's coming in. And maybe <laughs> Michelle. Okay. There hey. she is. Hi, we Michelle. are calling roll, so it's your turn. Michelle Fitzpatrick, uh, Secretary. There we go. All right. So having done that, we'll get right to our uh, June 14th minutes of meeting. Um, they were in the agenda. And I guess I will look for a motion, Tom. I move that we accept the minutes as uh, presented in the agenda. No. <coughs> Second. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. Wait, 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 we'll do a discussion. Don't get up excited. Okay, discussion. Yeah, I, guess, I was we... not at that meeting, and I'm I'm there voting the same as everybody else for every motion. Okay, all right. So first of all, is there a second so we can discuss it? I'll second. Okay. Open for discussion. Our first comment is Christine says, I wasn't there. Okay, so that's one. Thank you. You were there in spirit, I guess. Right? I was there in spirit. Okay. I have a question on item 4.4, Yukon Economic Model Presentation. Was there a conclusion? Um, did we have a discussion when we had the discussion about that? Because there's not much in the minutes here for yeah uh, the there of was um, I sent out their report I believe then I did send out the report right uh, Bruce yes you did no it was in the package the report was right the report was in the package um, and the discussion was we should put it out on the website I then I was going to do this later but then uh, I had to reach out and get approval from the school and the students. I did get that just last week, uh, which I was going to relay to you guys to publish their report on the website. So yeah, there was, I, I mean, it was, you know, not, not very, it wasn't, it wasn't a big ticket type of item in terms of uh, conclusions, right? Um, okay, okay, so I, I'd forgotten I remember seeing the presentation in our last minutes and I thought there might be a, a little bit of a concluding statement because it says the students reviewed the conservation economic model for open space and it drops it. And I was thinking there might be a little bit more, but you've just explained that you really couldn't do much because you wanted to get the permission to present the uh, out to the public their report that you just acquired. Uh, yes, during publication. And I'll, there was a question to me about verifying the model, which I did do. I did find one error, but the, it was minor. So I did update that. And so I have verified that the model matches the prior results. Michelle. So I, yeah, I think you, you could just go ahead and add a sentence to the minutes to, to what you just said is that, that, you know, the, the council the committee agrees that we should post this after you get permission from the professor or whatever, just have a sentence saying that that's the next action. All right, uh, Bruce, did you capture that? Uh, yes. Add to, add to 4.4 4 .4, yep. uh, that the uh, commission requested that the student's summary be published on the website. And I agreed to do so after verification or after approval to uh, do the, that publication. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that. 
Yep, add that to the minutes. Uh, any other comments? All right, so uh, I be, Tom was the uh, was the one that provided the motion. Would you like to amend your motion? Uh, I amend that we uh, make uh, no corrections for uh, Kristen Sandy's not being participating in the um, of the vote. Uh, she's properly recorded as being <coughs> absent, and that uh, section uh, four point four be amended to include a statement uh, about getting permission to posting after uh, permission for publication is, is uh, obtained. I move that uh, um, that we uh, accept the uh, amendments uh, as proposed. Second. Uh, all right, I was gonna say, who, did you do the original second? Yes. Okay, all right, because I forgot. All right, so uh, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion is stated. Show of hands, I see everyone except Kristen. So we have four, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, Kristen, uh, I'll opposed. I know I abstain, I think it's, it, a, I can't approve minutes for something I wasn't there for, right? Well, you technically you can, but. All right, then I'll, uh, I'll approve them too. Okay. <laughs> I don't wanna be a, you know, All right. a naysayer. Six, six yay. And this time she is an attendant and can vote, so. All right, and I, I will put the note to uh, add the student <clears throat> summary. Uh, Larry, this is Tom Olson. Just yep. for Kristen's education, the reason I'm, I'm confident in, in voting for these is that I did, this is something unique with Zoom here, is I was able to review the whole Zoom meeting. That, it's like I wasn't there. It's just like I didn't say anything during the meeting, which mm -hmm. is fine. But I think uh, uh, that's why I'm very confident in, in voting for these minutes. Thank you. Yeah, that is a good thing about the Zoom meetings is you can kind of go back in time and look at it. Um, but sometimes that's not a good thing. Uh, okay, so the next, let's see, next topic is public communications. And we have no public, although we do have some via written. Uh, so was that in the package, or yes. or Bruce, or did yes. afterwards? Okay. Yeah. So that where was one, and let me get through here. So is in your package from Adrian Winterholer, uh, June twenty fourth. Uh, have you folks uh, reviewed that in the agenda, Tom? Yeah, I reviewed this letter, and I'm a little. Uh, I agree that there's trash at Bluff Point and that the ocean, you know, things, uh, you know, he's, he, he talks about this department of uh, DEP and, 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 and uh, DMV as far as what's going on there. That's all true statements. It's all facts. Uh, again, that's state property, not part of Groton directly as far as uh, what's within our controls here. Uh, and so, but I guess I'm interested in hearing what your team, party caucus and our government, this looks like it's kind of a chain letter that he sent out to yeah. people based on the last paragraph. Uh, I think we owe him, a, he's asking for a response from us. And so I, I'd be recommending that we do respond to him and, and point to uh, all, all our efforts relative to plastic reduction. And, you know, Kristen is probably the one to answer it myself because she's mm -hmm. the most knowledgeable on this. But that's what I would recommend is that we uh, prepare that, you know, that Larry and Kristen work together to kind of put a response together uh, that just says that we, we understand all your points here. Uh, we, we've been working on this over the number of last couple of years. Uh, and, uh, and hope to uh, continue these efforts in the future. And that if you can support these, uh, our local efforts uh, would be much appreciated. Kristen? Yeah, so uh, I, I agree. I think this just looks like he just did a scatter shot. He's just putting it out there everywhere so that then he can follow up. And I, I totally agree with everything he's saying. Um, you know, we might, I'm happy to write a letter in response. Um, and we might point him to some local conservation groups or garden clubs or youth services where they can get people out there picking up trash, you know, because that's not specifically something we can do, but there are lots of groups who do things like that. So that might be a recommendation. And Larry, if you want to, you know, we, you and I can meet separately. I'll, I'll throw something together and you can approve it. And 
I'm happy to do that. All right. Uh, but rather than a moat, yes, Bray. I just wanted to add, uh, I've dealt with Bluff Point uh, from an educational side for many, many years. And this is uh, uh, once the public discovered Bluff Point, there's been different time periods where uh, trash was an issue. Uh, there was a time when they used to have trash cans. Uh, they don't anymore. Uh, it, they noticed that if they take the trash cans away, there was less trash. And then at the parking lot, uh, we, I had discussions with the, the uh, park supervisor about mowing the lawn where the picnic tables are, thinking that, that what a great place that when people park at that time, they weren't mowing any of the grass. It was just getting longer and longer. And uh, so they were able to put it into the budget to get uh, the lawn mowed. Uh, and then it turns out uh, for years, there was a volunteer Bluff Point group that just swept through Bluff Point once a week or, or uh, less frequently to pick up trash. And I was always impressed over the years that with the number of people who were there, that the level of trash was always uh, very, very limited and mostly to the parking lot. So I think that I, I have not been there uh, from the parking lot side or walked through now for a couple of years. So I, it could be that the spring has opened up and right now there's a, a, a great deal of people picketing there and, and therefore there's a larger amount of trash that when this gentleman walked through uh, than normal. But it is just one of um, uh, being aware of it, uh, maybe uh, talking to uh, DEP and just to see you know, how things are going at the park. Is there anything that we can help them? Perhaps in some sort of a way, educational outreach or something about uh, that where there are problems at the, uh, at Bluff Point, people misusing it. Uh, so I, I don't know at this point in time uh, how bad it really is from, from what he is saying, but I think you've got a, a, a great way of getting back to him about talking about how our approach has been toward plastics and ocean plastics and things like that and what we're trying to get our local community to do. Thank you. Uh, other comments? All right. Uh, I mean, I go, I'm there as I cycle about once a month or so. And, you know, I didn't think it was that bad given the amount of people. And I also noticed that now that the state is collecting money to go to the park and they have a, uh, looks, I don't know if it was state police, but th there is, there's an officer that's there from time to time uh, and sits there and either make sure people uh, from out of state have the, the right uh, payment. So things are, things are evolving because of the volume. Um, so I, I think, uh, yes, it's not our purview, it's, it's not part of the town. Uh, so I think, you know, having that letter and from an active community participation, you know, to have him kind of re-engage a volunteer group would probably be a great option uh, to do, just like we did earlier on another piece of property that we talked about last week. Yeah, Bray? Uh, Bray, Ken, uh, you might mention in the letter that also the Conservation Commission has worked with the uh, uh, Shellfish Commission, the Town Shellfish Commission, and the only place in the town that uh, there is an active shell fishing uh, is the Quantic River which is right next to Bluff Point. You have to park at Bluff Point in order to access uh, the waters that are out there. I haven't seen very many people out there. I'm not quite sure what the, uh, what the uh, particular program is for uh, harvesting, recreational harvesting is right now. But uh, this relationship between the Shellfish Commission, the town Shellfish Commission and Conservation Commission is one of working toward keeping the Quantic River clean 
via plastic picking up trash along the shoreline and encouraging people to bring in and take out whatever they bring in um, has been our part of our mantra for the recreationals uh, between that relationship. So I just want to add that in there also. And that uh, office, oftentimes the officer you may see in the parking lot is an officer of the Shellfish Commission who, who monitors uh, and checks on to see whether or not people have permits if they do go shell fishing. All right, other comments? So I think I'll do this is, is that if there's no exceptions is that the commission will provide a response uh, to Mr. Winterholer and with a lot of the comments we've just said. So uh, I guess the real thing is Kristen already expressed a support or interest in doing same. So we will, we will do that. That's why everybody's doing a head nod. So we'll do that uh, without exception. And we will move along. So the next item. Uh, the open space plan parcel status. So I do have this. Let me bring this up. Uh, share screen. Okay, let me just share screen. There we go. All right, that's the get rid of that. All right, this is oops, I guess that doesn't help, does it? Uh, I need to do this to make it bigger. So you guys can. All right, is that readable? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So um, been working through this and Tom's been providing these updates. So you'll notice the June dates uh, that were approved. And I believe we just got in last week, uh, all the updates. So there's now four, the four that were approved in June. Um, I will subsequent to the, it's already been approved. So subsequent to this meeting, I will put together the July web update package and we'll include those four. So I think the discussion is on those remaining. Um, <clears throat> we are going to talk about um, Wolfbrook, which let's see, that got combined. Uh, let's see, so that one got combined with these two. Is that correct, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't okay. know if you can hear me. I think my system is acting weird. I'm going to bail out right now. And right. We can out. we can hear you, but your 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 uh, video froze. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Well, he'll recycle. Anywho, uh, we'll I'll talk until Tom gets back if he knows this anyway. So the there's been an update. Uh, that was done for these three. We're going to review that next. Uh, and after that, I guess real question with waiting for time is after that, in terms of the team, what we're going to do next. So we did that. So that leaves. Uh, uh, he finally popped off. So land fair, we I thought we did. Mm -hmm. I seem to I seem to remember seeing that. So the, the land fair has been developed. I'm back now. Uh, the land fair has been developed, but we, we it was on hold pending a determination. You were going to ask the uh, town manager how we wanted to handle this. Are they going to go off and try to sell this property, or are we going to try to turn it into uh, uh, into open space? Because rice now is not there's not a clear path for those eleven parcels. Um, I did. I did reach out and talk to him. Their response was, <laughs> "Let's see." His response was, "I'd rather you wait uh, until we go through the process rather than getting ahead of the time and doing a stewardship program." 
I kind of said, well, the act of doing a stewardship program was to provide input, which would help in the determination. So it's one of these catch-22 things. So, so yes, I did reach out. That was his recommendation, Tom. Um, so I think it's up to the, I mean, again, we're advisory. And so we can still make a decision of what we would like to do. Um, well, at this point, I, my recommendation would just continue to hold it because there's nothing really, uh, this is, you know, totally surrounded, you know, type of, uh, uh, you know, classic uh, open space for the, for the property owners around there in that area. Uh, and what's something we should per, be pursuing in the long run. I think that's really our next step is that we've identified this parcel. It meets the general criteria to be held as open space and that we, uh, in the future, we should be, you know, working towards uh, identification and getting the necessary open space protection in place. And we should include these parcels in that effort is probably the thing to take a look at because it's a worthiness here as identified in this draft stewardship plan. And so that's come. I just put this on a, in a holding uh, uh, area for it. Uh, so that's so, so. So that would be. Um, let me change the color here. Uh, so that would be this one, uh, this one. Mm. Yeah, the reason that, that, would, that I said that one is because that is literally just on the other side of the uh, uh, two streets over or yeah. one street over from, uh, this is a general area. All right, so the recommendation is to I guess align with the town manager's uh, request and kind of hold while they're pursuing that uh, decision. Yeah, I think uh, what should happen probably is that the parcel subcommittee should, you know, I need to get those people together and say, here's our all our efforts for these larger parcels and maybe go forward with trying to get protection for things like now that we know kind of have an idea of how many parcel packages we're talking about and stuff, as far as to try to, you know, uh, force ourselves to go forward working with the town saying, here, here's the parcels to go after. And, and maybe we need to go continue to explore some of these smaller parcels. We start getting, you know, from the five acre down to the three and two acre ones, see what, if there's anything else that we can kind of put together here. And as over the next, uh, a few months here for as we continue through this because this is a year-long effort that we're really on, uh, on right now in regard to what air what things that we should be identification for getting a uh, uh, protection and, and what the valid reason is and for and by doing the uh stewardship plan we, we develop those reasons for for having to protecting these areas well no i i i agree that the next step was the legal protection and i did have discussions with uh, John Reiner on that topic um, and didn't really reach a overall conclusion on that. Um, so I think we may have to, to push in terms of what's you know the appropriate legal language um, mm -hmm. and reach out and kind of push that now that we have pretty much gone through all the stewardship plans. I mean, that's, that's your recommendation time. Well, we've gone through the stewardship plans for the larger than three acres. There's still a lot of other parcels that are less than three acres. It's probably an equal or not a greater number. We're probably only 50% through the master list uh, on, on these, but we've at least identified the major components, which is the, what has been our thought process uh, since back in January. Well, the, yeah, I think the agreement was at the time that we weren't going to do stewardship plan on each of these little parcels unless there was some unique reason for that. And so I, are you suggesting that that the review, that the subcommittee review and see if any of those are worthy of a stewardship plan? Yeah, and I think I, I haven't looked at anything other than a few things like this Woods Walk. I, I started to go at the from the three to five acre thing that's how come woods walk is on here the no, uh, number 18 there on the list is a good example where um it's uh that it, you know it it's 
uh, an ideal thing. It's kind of tied to another uh, uh, two, there's two uh, sections to it. Uh, one's actually a park and the other one, you know, is, is uh, open space, but they're slightly separated. Uh, it has, it could use some stewardship to it because of the uh, amount of, similar to what that letter was, that there is a lot of trash uh, in that area just because of the high, high volume being along Route 12, uh, north of this and opposite the sub base there, that it, it hasn't really gotten much attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those are the type of things that, you know, that I would be looking for in the big picture long term that the local residents would help get involved in some type of stewardship of the local area there. You know, the friends of the Woods Walk Park and stuff that would take, look at their own park, working with Parks and Rec, and then and then go clean up around the, this other open space area that's, that they, that is, is a, a abutting their, uh, their properties. So that's the whole thing is kind of identifying these type of areas as I, I can, and I'll, I'll be working that, on that over the next couple, you know, next week or two, I have some time um, that I can take a look at those and then work with the with the uh, with the parcel team to take a look at where else could we which of these smaller things are worthy of it and then uh, when I get back I'm going to be gone the entire month of August uh, out in Alaska but when I get back in September uh, I could be working in September and October to work on development of those smaller parcel uh, uh, areas. I know Bray has already identified a couple uh, down along the, uh, that are like the one and a half acre, almost two acre ones uh, along the Mystic River, for example, which I think is a, is, a, is a great one that we should be taking a look at development of. So that's something we wanted to kind of talk about a little bit about what's the future on these smaller parcels. Thank you. All right, uh, Michelle? Yes, this is Michelle Fitzpatrick. I I don't disagree that it's worth taking a look at those, but I also think we need to start actually doing the stuff that's on the schedule. So I, I, you know, I don't want to see us spending, you know, focusing our attention on getting more and more plans. I think we need to start executing the plans. So, so, and not saying we, we can certainly do both, but I think the execution of these, some of these plans, I mean, I think we need to get started on that. And if it means holding off on documenting the smaller stuff, I, I would lean towards actually executing the plans on the bigger stuff. Other comments? All right, so there's a couple of actions on the table, I guess three, if I can recall correctly. One is for the uh, subcommittee to look at the three to five acre ones to see which ones require stewardship plans. Number two is to do a, uh, a legal framework to protect those that we've identified that don't have protection. Uh, and in fact, which would cover ones with or without stewardship plans if we deemed them necessary. So I think that's a separate thing. And then the third one is, is to begin execution of the stewardship plans. Um, and I guess I'm not sure that we couldn't do all of that in parallel. Um, you know, the. You know, one is a, is a legal framework which covers everything, which is part of execution of the plan, uh, Michelle. So I think that's, you know, that, that, kind of strange, but that's probably the important thing <laughs> to get to get the protection in. Um, but I'll I'll look for I guess the the consensus of the uh, of the of the commission here. Anne, uh, Larry, this yeah, thank you. Uh, this is Anne. Uh, I like Michelle's comment about getting started on plans, but I think we almost need to come up with a strategy on how to approach which ones uh, to do. I think, Michelle, in the last Conservation Commission meeting, you mentioned that the same year was mentioned uh, for a lot of these. And so how are we going to prioritize and approach uh, executing on the plan? Uh, Michelle, back to right. You. So, so to me, executing the plan means the first step is coming up with prioritizing. So, basically, mm -hmm. I would see taking that that um, the timeline, right? That from each like have, make a huge spreadsheet that includes all those timelines from all of the approved plans, and and come up with the prioritization and and retime like retime like have a timeline that's more reasonable. So I mean, we decide which where to start, 
-hmm. But yeah, so the, the first step is the strategy to take a look at all the things that we propose to do for all those parcels and figure out, and then this could be a subcommittee that would, you know, put, take that first cut at it to, to take a look at here's, you know, here's all the stuff we said we're going to do. Now, how do we figure out where to start? Yeah. And, you know, so, put together, put together something that's a you know, proposed timeline that, that starts to make sense out of all of this. So what you're basically suggesting is have another index. The index happens to be the action plans. I think it's section four and five the, from each one of the items, what's in there. And then to look at a cut at prioritization in terms of which ones we should go after and then use that right. as our project plan to go forward. Right. All right. Is there volunteers to put that back, put that plan together so that next month we can actually see that kind of spreadsheet, which is really compact. Compo yeah. Right. I, yeah. So I volunteer to take the first cut at that, to take the, now I'd like to get right now, the only version I have of these plans are the ones that's in the, um, in, in the thing I'd like, I'd like to get uh, like word is, well, first of all, are those, Tom, are those um, management timelines, are those in Word or, or are they in, do you have, did you have an Excel for that? Are they just Word tables? They are Word tables at this point. Okay, so I'd like to get the Word version so that I'm not having to copy everything out of PDF into Word. Not a problem, I can, that's an easy thing for me to do. I'll get you that stuff either tonight or by tomorrow morning. Okay, so yeah, so if I have all, I'll take those, all those tables and start compiling it come up with a, a way to, to, to look at it and then, and then put something together to propose for the next meeting. All right, super. So I'll, I'll push on the legal framework question. Tom's gonna push on the taking a whack with the subcommittee on the three to five acres. Are there any worthy of that? Which I guess would be an extension to what's on the screen of a planned index. And then Michelle is going to take a whack at consolidating the ones we have done. We're up to seven. What do we got? More than that. More, More than that. that. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten. Um, uh, and so really it's a prioritization, not a prioritization, but a consolidation of those into one overall framework, which would allow us to do a prioritization and then allow us to lay out an execution plan. But that actually sounds like we're making progress here. <laughs> but we still need to vote on the one that we have in today's package, right? No, uh, no the, we have only one in today's package. I'm gonna get to that next. Okay. Um, and we're not gonna vote on it today. And I'll, well, we're gonna vote, but not quite not? the vote what we've done in the past. Let me get a new page on my okay. thing. All right, so if that's, uh, I have one more question, Larry. This oh, is yes, again. Um, I, the comment withdrawn for, uh, upon public works request. Can you give a little context around why that the Ga Gary Court stewardship plan? Here's the story on what happened there. I oh. developed. I put three parcels together: the two from Industrial Drive, and then I went to the abutting property, which was uh, just up the uh, 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 Fort Hill Brook, which included uh, the. Um, uh, water uh, uh, pollution control facility. They had eight acres out of the like 20 acres that are, are there. And, and when I initially presented it, because my point of contact is Michelle Maitland, she said, yeah, go ahead and put it all together. That sounds fine. We'll take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And then just because of the timing process, they got delayed at public works, but we went ahead and approved it because I hadn't heard back from them. Okay. Okay. Um, and so and then when I did hear back after the meeting that we approved it, they said, oh, the uh, public works director doesn't want that, that parcel included. So I had to pull it out. And then it, that's now become the industrial drive package, the two parcels that are on industrial drive as opposed to the one that's on Gary Court. And uh, so we, you, and you guys last month approved that, okay, the reduced scope. And that was approved last month and I and that got it's all ready for posting. So that's the story. So Gary Court really is off, has been withdrawn. Uh, I've not, I you know, I'm just gonna keep it around because it still has the information about that because they said 
they will take a look at it uh, over over the next year or so to see what happens. And uh, they, they may ask us, they may release that, but for whatever reason, I don't understand the whole uh, politics of the public works and how they make their decision process. And so I kind of backed off on, uh, it, it is their property, it belong, it's in that categorization. I was kind of stretching to try to kind of push things because we were very successful when we went with Public Works up uh, in the northeast corner there for the Wells Road one, and they were mm -hmm. very supportive and they liked that. So I thought I was going on a, on a, I was on a roll there to, you know, to have to if we surround their place, you know, they don't mind us, you know, talking about some of their property as far as trying to, in, in, you know, explain how things get to, uh, we can kind of steward open space for the town because it's all town property. But for some reason, the, with the with the fence around their property, they still you know want to handle it differently. So that's fine. And so I I backed off, and uh, I respect the public works. It's their stuff, just like I mean, we're not getting involved in the parks and rec stuff either, trying to encroach on their areas, uh, other than to notice there. And so that's kind of what was rewritten that way. That's the whole story. Thank you. All right. Uh, other comments on that? So we have the three actions and the three individuals and we will move along. I will probably add those to the action matrix just so we kind of keep all these things together. Oh, matter of fact, let me, uh, two action matrix. All right, uh, otherwise I lose track of stuff. All right. Um, the next one is the Wolfbrook property. Let me stop sharing. Uh, stop sharing that and share. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Let's see. So I think. Okay, I think that's what we're talking about. So, um, so th this was, I guess. AKA the Wolfbrook property, which which has been, I guess, in the process of being purchased by the town. We're not quite there yet, uh, but you'll notice. I guess this stuff happened since the last we met. So you notice on the bottom that um, I guess offline or between the meetings, Tom and I chatted about the fact that the Groton Open Space is contributing a couple hundred thousand dollars for the purchase of it. They did not request ownership of it, but they did request participation in the stewardship of it. So the thought we had was that by creating this stewardship plan in conjunction with Groton Open Space and Parks and Recs, we could kind of fulfill that I guess, legal requirement or at least request, as well as providing some basis and information and to help in any additional grants, et cetera, that might you know, uh, be pursued uh, going forward in the future. Having said that, formally, and, and I, I'm sorry, I should say that I did talk to Joan Smith and she was in full support of that approach, uh, but we have not actually gone to them formally with this package, what the, the thought process was that we would look at what's here and say, from our point of view, this is our base uh, baseline for this for the stewardship plan. Then have, I guess, as a subcommission or an offline session with Parks and Recs and Groton Open Space to go over this plan, do whatever updates are required, then come back and have a formal reprove and release. So that's the kind of thought that said, I wasn't looking for approval on the plan, but approval that this is our baseline and the proposal to go forward with them to come up with the final plan for this property. Okay, so, so did I explain that? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, for right? sometimes I meander in my explanations. Um, Tom? Yeah, the only thing I would add is that <laughs> When I put this together, if you slide down like uh, three pages or so uh, onto page uh, uh, seven of the plan, it's probably the best one to keep going down to page seven of the plan. And, uh, is, and <clears throat> this is probably the best description here. 
is that the Wolfbrook is the big white section in the middle there where, where, the, where the red lines all connect to. Uh, you, and so what I, in this plan, what I've done is I've, I'm linking the uh, Pendleton Farm open space plan, stewardship plan with it, as well as the Bel Air one down here that's on the, towards, the, towards the Bel Air section. There's another uh, 16 acres down there. And putting all three of those par town owned parcels together, the, the par Bel Air Parks and Recs already owns that. We've got Pequot Woods, it's handled by the Pequot Woods uh, Commission. So, but there's linkage for these other sites. Uh, and also for the Wolfbrook is owned by Parks and Rec also. So <laughs> what I'm trying to do here is, is in this particular plan is in addition to the Wolfbrook in the center, also add in the Pendleton Farms and the, and the, and the, and the North Bel Air North section here uh, that are on town uh, that aren't covered by Parks and Rec. And so there's three parcels uh, that are included in this plan as opposed to just the Wolfbrook by itself. And I'm letting, GOSA is only really interested in the Wolfbrook because that's the one that they're putting the money towards. Uh, but I think from our perspective, once it's all town property, having, you know, trying to cover the areas that aren't parks and rec is really what our goal is. Okay, open for comments, questions. Bray? Uh, Bray here. Uh, Tom, I have a quick question on your red line uh, that spiders out down to the Bel Air property. It goes across a big piece of land that uh, doesn't have any, has a little pond on it, it looks like, but nothing else. Is that town owned or is that? Um, Yes, it is town owned right now. And you've got Eccleston Brook that goes uh, pretty much where the red line is. Okay. Um, and so there, there is a path, currently a pathway. My envision here in, in putting these red lines on here as part of the management plan was to say that we need to take a look at what's the future trailing, uh, you know, as far as where should we be having trails as this uh, area is developed. Because this is, you know, there has been expressed recreational desires, but also we need to be worrying about protection of some of like the, the, the white cedar swamp and stuff. So it's kind of a mixed bag. This is gonna take some, uh, and I think that's where I go to like to be involved here is to help identification where there are trails. Uh, Come on, can, uh, from coming out of the wolf there, uh, there's, there's already a trail there. And, there's, and so there's things that are already happening but we need to take a look at it as far as from the long term. That's why the red lines are there. That's all I had on that. All right. So, oh, great. Oh, uh, just a, a thought I put on the table. Uh, thank you for all your work, by the way, Tom, on this. Uh, right now, Pequot Woods is uh, trying to envelope in all the purple lands that are next to Pequot Woods into one Pequot Wood uh, because the trails do run through the purple areas. And I was thinking across the street uh, for as once the town finally acquires Wolfbrook that we have all these nice connections that are there, uh, including the uh, property, the empty property right now that the town does own next to Bel Air, that if all those, let's say, become Wolfbrook. So is the trail system, because I could see access coming off of uh, uh, what, Pendleton Farms, let's say there's there might be some access, I'm not quite sure uh, if that's landlocked or not. But uh, some of your others, uh, that the have like Bel Air open space and so forth, if it was all called Wolfbrook. Uh, so consistency when you're making a map and you're making uh, uh, trails connections all through there, that it, that it doesn't have, it doesn't become like Pequot Woods, what we're arguing, it, it's piecemeal, well, it's, it's fractured. But that, that's a discussion that we can, uh, that might be had in the future. Tom? Just as a rebuttal there, I just, just so you're aware of it, if you listened in on the uh, 
when the town council was reviewing at the uh, committee of the whole, uh, there was a couple of counselors came forward and says that this parcel, if we get purchased, we need to take a look at how we're going to name it. And we need to go talk to the National Park of Pequots uh, as far as for getting naming in, in place. So uh, there's yeah, more going on here than uh, than us as far as I'm taking a look at naming. Opportunity. Yeah, we're, yeah they, they, this is a temporary name for a working name. I suspect that the town council is going to come up with a name and not, and we can provide recommendations. But I suggest or I recommend we don't get into that today. Uh, but I think your point, uh, Bray, is, is valid. Uh, and that's why Tom put these, you know, adjacent parcels in there to make it a single plan, which I think we ought to go forward is with that and that's we'll review and discuss that in a second the pequot woods one that's kind of adjacent and connected tissue um which brings up the question gee should there be a representative from that board but i believe are you not on that board bray i'm chair of the board you're chair of the board so your participation in this kind of covers that i think <laughs> a little bit so, so, so I think we're okay there. So my, my suggestion is that we do this step-by-step step, is the first step is to review the package that's in the agenda and see how we wanna change that. And then the next step would be to, uh, I guess, anoint a subcommittee that could then work with the, not get it tied to, the, to you know, to a, in other words, left three or less. So we don't have a formal commission meeting, but then they can work with GOSA and Public Works and kind of taking the next step. So let's do that first step. Um, and what we normally do is, is we say, hey, Tom, could you take us through this? Um, and then comments or questions or updates or clarifications would be done on this package. So Tom, could you take us through it? Sure. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's three there's three parcels, and that's all in the ownership. As I made a lot of uh, assumptions here based on the uh, purchase and sale agreement that's been processed uh, in the in the in the land use issues, uh, and then the in the current land issues. You know, as far as that, there's no I note here that and see that there's no current uh, recreational uh, path. However. There are a number of trails and a number of uh, things. So if you go down, and as I said, there's three hunting stands that have been found on the northern portion of the of the central uh, parcel. Uh, as noted in the photos, if you want to go down to the next page, there, Larry, since, since you're controlling, uh, you know, we got these hunting stands, and there's trails that are supporting those also, which I was kind of surprised at to see a lot of local activity, obviously, going on uh, in those parcels and everything. Uh, the natural system value, uh, Larry per, did the evaluation on that, uh, $3,000 per acre, which is on the upper half of the parcels, which is, uh, so, you know, we've got the standard caution in there. So that's all I had on, on this thing, on that portion. The base map is, as we've mentioned already, we can go past that. And then into the next page uh, is the uh, <clears throat> identification of, of resources and, and this type of stuff. Uh, I took liberty because I had already uh, had done some work up at, at Pendleton Farms. That's where most of these pictures are from. Uh, in regard to that, they're, they're pretty. But there is some identifications of, of you know with the uh, mark the standard town markers on open space for open space properties that are subdivisions. In the in this case of Wolfbrook, there are none, and I doubt if there's going to be included in the sale because it, it didn't go through the developer process. Uh, as far as taking a look at uh, other local trails, there is some coming off of the, uh, from the southern portion already. Uh, there is a trail that's uh, coming out off of the, from the Bel Air and hooks you over to the Mystic uh, uh, Woods and then also to the Mystic Metal Lane over to uh, Pequot. So identify all those uh, areas in here. So going on to the next page, we already talked about this uh, 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 chart, in, which has the, uh, and, and, talk, and then we can talk, go through the, uh, uh, you know, basically carbon sequestration on the standard Eccles and Brooks stuff. That's what we're seeing here for the standard uh, soils and everything else. I don't have any real comments. It's all, it's all heavily wooded. Uh, we do have some critical uh, diversity uh, identified 
and and then it, it really hasn't changed that much over the years with these from the aerial photos. So I don't have anything uh, anything that's really unique there. Um, what's unique here is that when we get into the historical recreational summary, is that I did add an appendix to this section uh, to this plan, which I haven't done in other ones, and we'll get to that later. But uh, and then also we know that that there's been uh, surveys done, and you know, these are kind of some of the examples of, of uh, surveys that have gone on uh, relative to the Pequot Woods. And this was heavily included into the grant request that the town that uh, Deb um, uh, put together when she made, made the, for the Oswa grant. And so, and so I did note uh, that. And so that's what this was kind of, uh, uh, you know, people knew about this and that's why the town council, as I mentioned before, is interested in, in taking a look at what the Pequots have to say in regard to naming opportunities. So, and there's also, in, um, and these are some of the white cedars uh, out there. There's some lots of glacials and some historic uh, stone bridges there. It's a very interesting property. So as far as on, on what's going on out there as well as the pond. So we get to the management recommendations, pretty standard ones here in regard to that it is part of the, uh, of, of, you know, taking a look at the uh, uh, green belt, central green belt. Uh, and then just taking a look at general clearance, boundary marking, public uh, establishment of some trails. Uh, one of the things that I should point out is that, and I didn't include it in here, uh, is that one of the town councilors was interested in disc golf. And as far as, is there an area here? And there is some area that is flat. Uh, it's not a cleared field or anything like that. So it would take a significant development. And my personal thing is I did not include it in here because I, you know, I'd say, let's take a look at what the, uh, from a, a stewardship possession, that's not what normal what we would normally be doing for an open space is, is putting in a recreational thing such as a disc golf uh, course. I, the one exception, obviously, that is over on on um, uh, Flanders Road, <laughs> the, the 17 acres of the town owns there. The town, you know, locals from the general area have established a disc golf that is very semi-professional almost level on town property. And so I don't think that, and when I go talk to Mark Berry, he was not aware of it. He has, uh, he has taken the information that I provided. And, and I don't know if he's going to, uh, to take a look at that as a, as a uh, uh, parks and rec uh, uh, area. Uh, but that's the same area that's still kind of on the market, you know, from the town perspective. So it, it's, and so it's kind of one of these areas that it's ideal for, um, uh, uh, we're, we're, as from the conservation perspective, looking for it to be uh, um, with uh, uh, just open space. And that's, and that's really just across the street from uh, the, the northern section of this at, at Pendleton. That's come I noticed that. So we're not that far away uh, uh, from the Pendleton Farm section to the disc golf course. And so maybe we should, as a conservation commission, be recommending getting, you know, making uh, that area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the, uh, the disc golf course on, on off of Flanders. I think I'm locked out here. Nope, okay. we can still hear you. Okay, good, just checking. So that's all I had on, on, the, on the management recommendations and then the number five, paragraph number five next okay. page. Well, why don't we hold up a second because okay. we usually pause and have a discussion here. So okay. I think there's one point just mentioned on what do we address in disc golf? If there's a second point, uh, in terms of the, the signage is the wrong term, but there's uh, markers and other things in terms of, of the historic sites and what is the plan to handle that? Do we pull up all the stakes? Do we, you know, make it, you know, the not, um, uh, you know, uh, make it kind of low key? Do we make it, you know, something that people visit? So I think there's a whole area around what to do about the historical uh, artifacts in the property. So those are two things that aren't on this list. I don't have any problems with, you know, the generic stuff. So I want to throw it out to: should we amend the recommendations to address those two items, or other items, or not? So let me throw that out for some discussion. Bray? Uh, this is Bray. I just want to make a quick comment about the flags. Uh, Pequot Woods has flags in it also. And it 
uh, I just lost his name, from uh, the uh, Pequot Museum. Ken McBride? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, in his work, he had a whole group of volunteers uh, that were surveying all these areas for remnants from the Pequot uh, Woods, uh, not Pequot Woods, but the Pequot War. Uh, a lot of people out there with um, metal detectors and when they got a ping, they flagged it and moved on. They didn't necessarily always dig it up. So the flags are, I guess, part of that effort. There are, there are a few flags still left at Pequot Woods. I'm assuming that there is still some activity going on there, but I, 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 I don't know what the pace, the pace is not as the same that it was uh, numbers of years ago when they had a full grant funded uh, to do this work. So on the, on the flags, it's, it's for future discussion to say, uh, they're not necessarily, um, let's say something historic that you can look at. It's it just, there's something underneath there that somebody got a ping on and they flagged it as far as I know. Uh, is But like the uh, stone bridge uh, that Tom had a picture of and so forth, uh, that would be nice if it was included on a trail system. But I'm not quite sure what else is out there that's historic that uh, needs to be identified. I know over at Gunjiwan, off of Gunjiwan Road, uh, that particular property that has the thousand year old uh, historic stone structures on it, uh, their approach to having a very unique piece of property with a lot of uh, unique historic structures built into the hillside is to keep everybody out and have a uh, you call in to ask for a tour, if you will. And they would like to have the access limited to that level so that uh, they're not gonna get people just trampling through and disturbing what's there. So it's a sort of a two-edged sword, whether you advertise that we have historic things there or we don't. Thank you. All right, I think that's, that's the point I was trying to make up is, as a management recommendation to determine the answer to that question, right? But how do we handle it? Do we protect it? Do we ignore it? Do we, whatever, I, you know, so that was, I thought it was worth having that discussion and making it a conscious decision rather than just letting things fly. Other, anybody, other inputs? I don't see any, uh, Tom. Well, it's just that if you go down to the number five, I think I've addressed that uh, in, in one of the actions there in the last action. I, Tom, I don't see a number five on here. I see a four. It goes to A and B. Four. Five is the evaluation. Okay, so I'm, I think you're missing the title there. Oh, no, here's five is evaluation. So this is all part of oh, 4A, 4B, oh, oh. and then that, evaluation yeah, that, number five. Okay. All right, so it's 4A, I guess. Right. Um, so, okay, yeah, yes. So that point is there. Um, so I'm, hmm, I guess that handles that. Uh, any any interest in doing something about the disc golf option? <laughs> Are they looking to come in here? There was an interest expressed at the town council meeting to use a portion of this property for that purpose. So I think it's something that we're going to have to address. If our recommendation is not to, that's one thing. If our rejection is to, where would it be? So I think it's, it's not we're saying yes or no, just that to we proactively address it. Yeah, Michelle? I, I would suggest that um, that you have that discussion with the ghost of people when you talk about this. So I, I personally don't think we should be setting up recreational areas like that, but that I'm, 
I'm not totally opposed to it if it seems like it's the space is there. So I guess it's back up. Uh, so maybe the, the given the fact here, maybe we should add an action item in here that just says consider an option uh, of a disc called wherever they call it, uh, space on the property and then have that discussion as we go through this, right? Uh, another way that I might think about it is uh, active recreation versus passive recreation. So our, and will we consider this um, golfing a, even though it has a, a low footprint, would, would we be considering that as active recreation and then have that discussion of uh, at some point once the town gets the property about what is active recreation that would be suitable for this property? Well, I think that's a point of getting Parks and Rec involved in this discussion that, that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, Tom? Yeah, I, I agree with Ray that active, passive, and normally active would be Parks and Recs. And so I think I have the you know survey area residents for interest in improving open space uses, trying to sales. And I, I think I agree with putting another step in there for, you know, with Parks and Rec and GOSA uh, to take a look at act, uh, oppor active uh, recreation opportunities uh, and set asides uh, uh, for evaluation. So I'll, I'll, I'll write something up there and put that in. Uh, put that in? Final okay. Version. All right. Any other cut? So I think we resolved at least my two questions. But in other, any other points on the the actions and timeline? This is the guts of the of the recommendation. All right. So let's continue on. Yeah. This is uh, you know for the evaluation, it was pretty just a standard thing for for the Echo, principally Echoes and Brook, which runs through the entire. Uh, uh, area for, is part is the primary thing that we're trying to protect here. And as far as um, this appendix is something from I pulled out of the history that was developed when the uh, GOSA was um, uh, challenging the developers' plans back in the in the 2006 timeframe, and they uh, actually they, they're the ones that are maintaining this, and they sponsored it. Uh, as uh, Whitney Adams is one of the one of the authors of this, and he is still a, 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 on the direct, a board, a, one of the directors of uh, GOSA right now. But I included this because it does give you, there's a lot of good information in here relative to the different um, um, areas of flora and fauna that's on the property, which is, I'm just trying to capture that to put it in here. So it, it, it gets, it, we transferred out of the GOSA stuff and included it with the town stuff. And also the hydrology and the vernal pools and 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 why this is such a unique uh, parcel and for it's it ensuring that its future uh, preservation is there as far as the, when the trail as the trail system is, is developed. Uh, now, I mean, part of this, guys, is that we're in the process of acquisition. The town council approved it, but there's a couple more steps. So everything we do to I guess, demonstrate the value of this property and getting more organizations together to support it benefits getting through the final approval. So that was kind of like, if, you know, we get these, you know, if, if us and GOSA and the you know, I'll go back to the RTM or, or whatever, you know, and say, hey, here's the work we've done and here's why, you know, that helps smooth the way. So that's, that again is part of this, part of this process. So I think we're to the end of this. Um, I think I will solicit a motion to adopt this as a draft stewardship plan uh, with the changes as noted, that Tom has noted, and the fact that we would then take this draft plan and work with Public Works and GOSA to come up with a, I guess, a final uh, recommended stewardship plan. Tom, I just would. Uh, uh, you said is, you said part, uh, public works is really parks and recreation. Not I'm sorry, I meant parks and rec. Thank you. <laughs> Good.
Good guess. I, yeah. I move that we uh, that I update the plan uh, as in the with the with the comments that were provided here, and then uh, provide this uh, to uh, to Gosa and to Parks and Rec for uh, their review and further action. I'll second it. Any additional discussion? All right, we'll call the vote. All in favor? That's unanimous. Um, which then leads us to taking action on it. So Tom is going to do the update, which looks pretty minor. But then I, I would like to formally send a letter time. I'm okay with, with delegating you to do that. But I would like to identify a subcommittee from the commission and also then part of that invite is to say who is going to be the representative, you know, from Parks and Rec and GOSA to then take, you know, go go the next iteration. Um, now, Bray, given your involvement with the neighboring property, is that is that uh, can we can we volunteer you for to be part of that subcommittee? To be part of it, not, <laughs> not necessarily to head it up, but. Uh, um, I can, yes, I can, uh, I'll be part of it. All right. Um, and Tom, I mean, logically, you'd be the, the next guy. All right. So that leaves a third opening. <laughs> so I don't want everybody to fight over it, but, but who would like to, uh, to be the third member? Well, I, we're still missing uh, Karen here, and she may want to get involved in this. Yeah, I know, but if somebody is willing <laughs> to volunteer today, I will take a bird in the hand, so to speak. Nobody's jumping up. Um, can I ask, I, I guess, can yes, I ask you a question? Uh, are you, this is preemptive of a future, we're going to talk about stormwater uh, ne next, maybe? Is that right? Uh, that's or, one come. Yeah, that's one. That, yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. Are you going to be asking for a volunteer on that from the commission by any chance? Because that, if not, then I would volunteer for this. But otherwise, I would volunteer for that. <laughs> okay. Well, no, that one is. Did we want to participate? And if we wanted to participate, was it going to be volunteer? So if you're doing a preemptive, if we, <laughs> if we as a commission want to participate, you would volunteer for that. Then okay. Uh, so if so, not, yeah, then I would volunteer for this one. Okay, that, that's fair. I got, I got the thing. This is ranked, ranked voting for, uh, for the commission. Very good. First choice, second choice. Uh, we'll do it better than New York City did. Um, all right, so I would suggest, um, Tom, that uh, they kind of reach out to Karen and give her the option of doing that. Sure. Um, and then we'll go from there. Um, I, I don't have a problem if you if you draft and, and you know put out the letter over, over your thing you know with the thing saying yes per agreement with the. Well, I, I will bounce it by you if you want to. Okay. You know, as far as the formal letter, now the real question is: Is this going to the to to Mark Berry at Parks and Rec as a staff, or is this going to Mark to the chair of the of the town? Concert, uh, you know, Parks and Rec's commission? Uh, I would send it to Parks and Rec staff first and go to, in other words, to, to do the staff, this is still staff work. Remember it said, this is, this is more complicated than our other stewardship plans, although it might kind of set the groundwork on how we do it. We kind of go through this, getting more staff input, and then, remember it said the final proposal of the stewardship plan, then would have to go to you know, the town council, et cetera, to adopt it. And the, then the question of who then executes it or formally is responsible. And we'd like to see someone other than us because we're just an advisory group with no money. Um, so somebody else has to actually uh, execute, you know, these plans other than whatever volunteer efforts we can marshal. So I think the answer is yes, <laughs> along with it, Thomas. Um, all right, so we had a motion on the floor. We've had the discussion. 
Uh, all in favor of that uh, action plan, uh, Michelle? Oh, I'm, oh, sorry, I'm voting. Oh, you're voting. <laughs> voting. All right. Uh, Bray, I th all in favor? Okay. All right. That's unanimous again. Such a such a united group. You know, we can have somebody dissent on something. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do that. We've got a question mark that's either going to be uh, Karen or and and to some degree, it's depending on the next topic uh, that we're going to do. And uh, and I know we had that there. Is that, hey Bruce, is that letter in here? I'm trying to remember now. There's an email. Yeah, I thought I put an email in. Was there one in On there? Page uh, 37 of the package. You just passed it. Oh, there. There, oh. there this one, this is it. Yeah, right there. Okay, that's it. I remember I saw it in there. Um, MS4, yeah, that actually is next versus the Burroughs farm. So since we're kind of on that topic, maybe we can just talk about this and let, then we can go back to, uh, you know, the to the agenda per se, since we're talking about people. So I think you guys have read this um, and I guess I'll throw it out there is that reaction to participation might be the first one. Do we want do we want to support this or don't we? Is the fundamental question. Comments? Tom? Well, a lot of this, Michelle Maitland is also, you know, as the MS4 coordinator from Public Works on the, on the staff of the town. She's also been a prime mover with the uh, ECCB and the whole Birch Plain Creek uh, efforts. And that's how, uh, why she sent the request to me because I'm technically the, the, the Birch Plain Creek uh, point of contact there. I've been work, working with it and Karen's been helping me out there as I've been missing meetings because of my travels. But, uh, and it, but I, I think she's looking to, to kind of go more grander and get some input from the Conservation Commission as she tries to reach out um, you know, obviously, public works uh, is, is, and this is one of their conservation type of related areas that they feel that they're they're looking for things. And in my discussions with Michelle, she said she, uh, she told me about this issue, doing forwarding it over and looking for assistance from us, uh, more so just to be bouncing ideas off and getting inputs and making sure she's having a coordinated effort within the town. And that's the reason she's asking at least for a point of contact uh, to, to come and to talk about this stormwater uh, runoff. Uh, topic. Thank you. Yeah, Kristen? Yeah, it, it doesn't seem to be any reason why we would not support something like this. I mean, it just seems like in, in the direction that we're interested in going. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess my view is there's no question it's of, it's of interest, it's prioritization. We talked earlier about how much is on our plate and how much we want to do. And right. that's really, that's really the point I want to raise. Is this rise to the level of, of, you know, because we are a volunteer team, is to say, yeah, I want to get involved and spend some of our uh, urge of energy on this topic versus some other stuff. That that's that's really all I was bringing up. Yeah, Michelle. Since we have somebody that's interested, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice of you. <laughs> and, well, I also, you know, I. Um, with the discussion, uh, the email that you had with the climate change and the everything going on there, I think this fits in very nicely with that, with uh, flood, uh, clean water and flood prevention, as we're going to have more likely to have increased intense storms coming. And so stormwater management is gonna be really important. So it kind of ties together with that. All right. But I don't know what your discussion around that email was going to be. <laughs> yeah, Kristen? Yeah, I'd be interested in that field trip. Mm. Just to learn more about it, you know? Yeah, me I don't too. Think, I think knowing about this, there's no harm in it in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's kind of two levels. One is to participate in the field trip and understand it. The second one is say is to say we're volunteering for an ongoing relationship and support of it. Mm -hmm. So, which are you suggesting we do the former 
first and then address well, the latter? She's saying I'm looking for community members who can ask smart questions and have a big basic understanding. I and mean, that's not that's not a big ask, you know. Um, to add voices, you know, so you know, it might be just she's looking for some support or you know, it might not be that we may be able to listen, we, we may be able to just stick our toe in it and kind of be involved without overdoing it. And still, you know, make some forward progress, learn some stuff, and be a part of it going forward. All right. Is there a uh, motion of our level of participation that someone would like to make? I have a question for Tom. This is Ann. Did you do you have <laughs> and I, did you talk to to Michelle Maitland? I mean, I do you have an understanding of times? Uh, and she's mentioned this in the past in my discussions. A lot of it was with you know as we were developing the stewardship plans with working with parks. I mean with uh, public works here and also through the ECCD stuff. So I, I I I've actually been in her office and talked to her on different occasions and stuff. Uh, and she's looking at just as as Kristen was saying to dip your toe into it and she's just looking to her, you know, point of contact. She didn't know if she wanted, I said, let me check with the with the entire commission. That's come. she put this all in an email so that we could have a discussion and see who else is uh, interested rather than just sucking Tom Olson into it as you. <laughs> <laughs> now we know the real thing. Uh, so, I, I, I get, let, well, let me make a, a proposal then since some, nobody else wants to come up with a, with a motion is that we, we support uh, attendance and participation in the field trip and then go from there. And I, I heard that Kristen and Ann had expressed an interest in the field trip, which kind of limits at least our participation support. And then we can come back and readdress it when you get more in input. Is that, is that uh, if I reconstruct that as a motion, would anybody willing to be seconded? Oh, so, Michelle seconded. Right. I, I, I kind of like to see Kristen or Ann seconded. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to be specific and, and, and say that the motion is that uh, uh, Kristen and Ann uh, be the representatives and support the, the, uh, the field trip as identified in this, in this memo, and then come back to the commission uh, to provide you know, any recommendations on what is our go forward. Uh, participation with, um, and I guess, what are we calling this? The Stormwater Commission? Is there a name for this thing? Uh, the, mm. Looks like it's M, the, the subject line of the uh, is, is that, building MS4 collective uh, wisdom. MS4, yeah. Sounds I, like a gang. That doesn't sound good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> <Like a gang. laughs> yeah. uh, I was just thinking, is another good, what the heck does it? I don't even see what MS4 stands for. I forget that now. Municipal it's, Separate Storm Sewer System. For us, it's my, Separate Storm oh, that Sewer that, System. Yep. That, that we did. Oh, four S's. I got it. Mm -hmm. Took it. Yes. As I slapped myself. If you better say uh, M4S, that wouldn't sound like a gang. Yeah, uh, M, M, oh, M4S rather than MS4. I hear you. <laughs> All right, is, is there a second to that motion? That, that long involved torturous I'll motion? I'll second it. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor? Okay, we got unanimous again. So, Bruce, <laughs> see if we can net this out a little bit. Is that is that the commission has voted to um, support the field trip as recommended by the MS4 or M4S? You take your pick, uh, and we'll report back in the fall uh, for you know what if any the commission's involvement should be going forward. That's kind of the sh I think the shortest I can make that. Um, all right. So now I'm not sure, Ann, how that then flips your rank choice on the the last discussion, which is a 
a, a little bit bigger commitment of time, right? Because, but again, it's probably will be before the fall. I suspect this is, you know, it's going to be three, four, five months off by the time you organize this. Does that does that change your your view on? Um, yeah, I I can volunteer for the other one. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is, well, the next thing on the agenda says Conservation Commission website and videos. Um, and I think the net on that is I'm going to do an update um, coming out of this meeting. Uh, I did not do an update from the last meeting because I wanted to kind of put it out as a group of four uh, new ones. Uh, and I also needed the approval to put out the uh, the OPIM summary. So that's on that side. Um, Tom, on the, the video for the cop property, Tom took a, a short view on it, but he didn't think it was <laughs> the, be the best video <laughs> to, to put out there, even with the, you know, his limited uh, videography skills. Um, so uh, I, I think I'm going to try and reach out to our videographer now that the, the COVID thing is kind of winding down. So let me take that if I can see if I can get some professional help on, on that. Videographer support for the comp video. All right, so I will do that and see if I can get some help on that. That then brings us to the borough's letter. Um, let's see. Well, oh, Invest in America. Oh, that's later. About so it's 36. Out. It's out. Oh, I passed, I passed it. <laughs> There we go. All right. So as you recall in our last meeting, uh, Karen took on the, the challenge of responding and framing the discussion we had on the borough's uh, proposal. Um, and this is what she came up with. And there's a little editing in here. That I guess the red is, is some a topic of discussion. Uh, in the meantime, I, oh, I think I had responded to Dr. Burroughs and saying, thank you for your, your, your you know, the, the master plan, and your, your support of the town and the conservation commission, you know, you know, it's taking it up and, you know, it's looking at providing a response to you, at least from our perspective. Um, he then reached out and called me and we had a long, we had about a 40 something minute discussion. Um, and I think there was, and I, and I gave him some sense of what I think the town would be willing or not willing to do because some of the options would require some funding from the town. And he is expecting, in other words, those options weren't a donation per se. He is there, the family, because he's not the only voter there or, or the owner. So they are looking for some monetization. So, you know, kind of with that, uh, you know that may or may not change our, our the structure here. So I thought we would take the time to go over uh, Karen's recommendation and uh, decide that we want to formally publish this as our feedback to Dr. Burroughs. So it's it's in the agenda package. Uh, did you have? I, I would hope you had a chance to read it. And I will open it for discussions. Um, any comments, Bray? Bray, uh, just to ask a little bit more information about your conversation with Dr. Burroughs, is there a sense that anybody has inquired about uh, purchasing the property? Um, has he had many inquiries? Or, or has he refused inquiries? Uh, 
Yeah, the, the the only and, I, and I'm thinking of you know was anything privileged or not privileged. So I'm thinking through that. If you excuse me a second, I would say that there is not any current development inquiries or options on the table. There has been in the past specific proposals to purchase land. And he has declined to make the sale because he didn't like the proposal and didn't feel it felt the it met the you know the community interest, if you will. So I, you know he's he's really trying to do the right thing here for the town. Um, and I you know I you know congratulate him for that. And turning down money is is a, the, the true test of uh, of commitment. So so he has done that in the past. So I. I think he is certainly willing to compromise is the right word, but to come to something that's a balance between maximizing the money that that you know the family would get and the benefits of the community. So that's kind of the where is that balance and what's the right uh, you know the right one that would you know kind of get through the process. Um, does that answer your question, Bray? Uh, yes. Do we know what he's asking? For the property? Oh, uh, no, we did not talk dollars. I do not know what he is, you know, what's the, the minimum he'd ask for. I think the thing is, is gets a little tricky because the town just spent a few hundred thousand dollars plus, you know, the, what the, I think it was eight, 800. What, did, what was the final tally on the Wolfbrook? 800,000, Bruce? Uh, I think we, I think the town only put in about four or something, and then there were grants yeah. and Gosa. So, yeah, but the yeah. total thing was eight hundred. Total was eight, yes. The, yeah. yeah, the town put in four hundred. Yeah. That you know, you know, my my gut check is that you know, would the town be willing to, to come up with more money for another piece of property? And I kind of went, I think that would be a stretch. Um, so, but no, there was no specific number provided. I th the only. Uh, just my last thought on that is that if the thinking about the the small houses that uh, it was an interesting concept these small little houses lined up uh, pocket homes as they're called uh, but I I have no sense of uh, since this was designed by somebody who lives out in Seattle Washington. Uh, racking my head to think about where I've seen anything like this here in New England. So I don't know how well it would be received, uh, nor do I know, are there any uh, developers out there uh, that'd be interesting to take this thing on? Well, those are two different questions. Let me take the first one, because I do have some input in that. When I attended the revised zoning uh, proposals. There, there was information uh, presented to the zoning commission of, uh, and I'm trying to remember what they actually called it. it wasn't the cottage? Maybe it was cow cottages rather than uh, something else. That in New England, uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. I mean, they, they showed a variety of of examples where it has been built, uh, and. That did lead to when they changed the zoning regs for that district, if you will. Yep. You know, it's kind of, it does allow things like that to be built there. So I think the from a zoning point of view and a town planning point of view, Bruce can kind of jump in here. I you know, I don't think there'd be an issue with something like that. Now, would it be exactly what they had? That's a whole different thing, right? The developer would have to do it in terms of the price per square foot and that kind of stuff. But I think the concept of you know, cottage homes in a mixed use environment is something that fits within the, that district's zoning today. Is that correct, Bruce? Yeah, it is. We uh, we just actually put in the, the cottage community regulations in, well, I mean, beginning of 2019. So um, it, it's allowed in that zone. The concept is, I think we allow 12 dwelling units, 12 cottages per acre. And the whole concept is there is community public space and it's not so much mixed use, it's more residential with, with public community space tied together. So actually those um, master plan pictures we saw are 
pretty similar to what you know a cottage community would look like and, and what's allowed in town right now. Um, yeah. I can't think of any examples in Connecticut around Groton. I know there are a few in Rhode Island that kind of gave us the idea to do that. Yeah, so that's your first question, Brad. The second question is, you don't know. I mean, you, you got to go out and kind of put it out there in the, in the market space. And I think something that the town could do from a development point of view is make it part of its sales pack and says we're interested. You know, there almost be, a, I won't say a sales agent for the borough's property, but maybe I am saying be a sales agent that says, hey, if they're interested in selling for this purpose, that, it, you know, and it does fit our zoning requirements that we could put it out there as part of our overall planning and packaging. I mean, that could be one of our recommendations from the Conservation Commission because it is a piece of public land, protected public land, plus those cottages uh, in general. It's, it's sort of like one of his options, D, I think. What, um, how widespread has been the release of his four concepts? He put it out to everyone that provided their email at his, what, the 2018 meeting? And there's okay. that, so probably about 50, 60 people showed up to that, as I recall. Yep. Um, so it's, it's, it's out there. And we published it in our agenda. So it's now part of the town public record, per se. So that, that's about all I can tell you, bro. All right, other comments or feedback or recommendations? Tom? I'm just looking online here, like realtor.com and stuff, and it appears that the farm is off the market at this particular time. Because Ray asked that question, what, what, what's the price and stuff that he's looking at? you see at? what they were asking before on there? Uh, on Zillow? No. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing uh, what any old pricing information and stuff. So. All um, right, so the, 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 I mean, where we were last time, and I think Karen captured that, he said, gee, we really like D, but, <laughs> um, you know, option option C would be our, our our second choice. I believe is kind of the net of this. Uh, Michelle, it's Michelle. I think we we just need to take that red part out, right? Because that was the discussion about the houses. So right. Yep. Um, but other than that, I it's this all sounds fine to me. I think she did a good job of capturing our discussion. No, I think she did. That, that's, that's why we're kind of presenting it here and getting your agreement before we hit the send button. So yes, the, the intent was that the red part would not be part of the final document. Other comments? Is there a motion then to formalize the re response as written, Tom? I move we accept the uh, Karen's draft uh, letter of re response to Dr. Burroughs, uh, eliminating the uh, comment section in red. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? All right. Uh, Bruce, uh, a question. Uh, I assume I would do that edit get it to you and you would put it on the town uh, whatever the, the town format yeah I can put it on stationary for you yeah yeah all right so let me let me do that edit and I will send it to you and I'll do a final grammatical review just to make sure I, I wasn't didn't look that close I was looking at content uh, all right, and we will forward that to Dr. Burroughs with our appreciation for what he's done. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, what time is it? Time check. All right, we're doing pretty good. Next is uh, Invest in America Act. 
Uh, is that out of sequence here? Where was that? Page 39. Thank you. Keep me honest here. 738. There it is. Um, ah, so uh, this, this is actually me because I've been getting these things and my, my view of the, the amount of money that is going to start to flow in because of climate change and everything else. So the, looking at the bill at the federal level, um, I found what I sent out was, I thought, a pretty good summary without wading through the hundreds of pages of stuff that were there. So this is informational. My assumption is, um, and I guess this is more for, for Bruce. Oh, uh, well, let me just finish and I'll call in you, Kristen. Is that, that the town staff would be kind of on alert to look for opportunities to uh, submit requests for some of these monies, right? As, as it goes through. I mean, because some of this stuff is still winning its way. Federal government works even slower than the Groton, the town of Groton government. So, okay, so this is informational uh, and kind of what's going to happen as we go forward. Kristen, you had a question? I, just uh, did you do the summary yourself, Larry? Uh, no, I, I looked at, I was trying to find out because I, I kind of saw some hints on it. So I rooted around and found the summary, which I thought was okay. a good summary. That's, yeah, it's so a good no, summary. I, I didn't. I didn't draft it myself. I'd like to take credit for it, mm -hmm. but I thought it was a good summary in plain English that says, mm -hmm. "Here's what's here," and if you go through, I know there's more stuff that's of interest, not necessarily of direct interest to us, but you're talking about, you know, uh, you know, carbon reduction. You know, eight billion here, eight billion there. Finally, adds up. Um, now, this hundred nine billion, for example, that includes trails. Right, so you know, so you look at each of these pieces, um, and here specifically, you know, there's 10 million for pedestrian and, and bike infrastructure, which is not quite trails, but it's it's in that in that vein. Uh, I mean, other things. Uh, let's see, those were the two big ones from us. I mean, a lot of stuff in this helps, right? The, you know, requires consideration, you know, but it doesn't align money to that, but just says if you go for funds, you know, as, as the way as they do their ranking, it's there. So I, I thought it was a really good summary for us to be aware of and for the town staff to be aware of. I, this is, these things take months and years as they kind of wend their way down to our level, right? But the good news is there's, there's lots of money that's going to be injected into the effort to sustainability, uh, carbon um, reduction, et cetera, et cetera. So all that's good news. That's, I just wanted to kind of give you a good news story that uh, you know, money, money talks, as they say in B.S. Watts. I seem to remember that from my olden days. Um, so I don't know, any, any uh, comments or I didn't have any follow-ups, et cetera, to ask on this one. This was information. Okay. The next topic was uh, plastics update. Um, I don't think, oops, no, I'll wait for there. All right, so on plastic, there's a couple of things. One is uh, Kristen gets a couple of kudos for the, uh, the, there was an article with the logo or the, the plastic reduction logo with the heart. So there was a nice article in the day on that. Um, actually, there's two articles in the same, the same, uh, the same day on related to plastic. So that that one was was for you. Uh, and the other one was kind of a it wasn't a formal survey. It was a pulse that says the non-event. I, I mean, I'll say it that way it, that that the plastics ordinance is a non-event in terms of the feedback, at least that the, the, uh, the writer of the article uh, came across when she talked to a variety of businesses. Now, the reason I'm bringing it up is that uh, when we started this whole thing, 
we kind of tag that says, oh, let's go back and do another survey, you know, to see how well things worked or reacted to. The question that I'm throwing out to you guys, is that still necessary? Or let it or let it ride where it is, Kristen? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, especially since the state has picked up and passed legislation. And, you know, on occasion, I've been into local businesses and been served a plastic straw, and I kind of nicely call it to the attention of management and say, gee, I, I don't know if you realize, but there's this ordinance. And then I send them a copy, and they're like, I said, you, you're not going to get a fine, but, you know, you just need to be aware. So people seem to be, like, very compliant. I, there's no fuss. There's no blowback. I, I think it's a dead issue, and I think we should, you know, just let it be as far as that goes. All right. Other comments? I, I tend to agree with you, which is why I brought it up. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, this, this is no drama is a good thing on this one. And it does set the, the, the groundwork for the next step, right? So NIFS never kind of quite made it, but the, the, the legislation of increasing the, or let's say at increasing the number and the type of plastic bottles, uh, you know, they're doing that at state level. So it's almost, that's the next step. And, and we can kind of watch that uh, as well. Um, and then do they, ra they raise the um, deposit to 10 cents, yes. I think, in Connecticut, which should improve yep. um, compliance. There's still not a market for that plastic, but that's a, that's a separate issue. That's a different issue. Well, they, they yes, they increased the, 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 the number of cents and they broadened Right. The categories and the things that are under that, uh, I guess that requirement that, that the, the, I was going to say ordinance, not an ordinance, I guess it's a law. But, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's kind of chugging along. Um, so, I think the community awareness of plastics and all that kind of stuff and the reaction to it is we've reached the tipping point where it's not, I don't know, whenever I talk to people about it, it's, it's not like a, it's not a contentious issue anymore. Right. It's, it's more of, well, what do we do about it? I mean, so if people want to do something about it rather than resisting it. So I think that's a good thing. So uh, maybe we'll take it off our agenda unless there's some specific action we want to do. Yes, Kristen. I just want to just let everybody know in case you don't know already, Jason Hines, who's a very um, you know, supportive of progressive issues around the community, has opened a store in downtown Mystic across from the train station it's called the Diddy Bag. And the whole point of the whole store is that it's fully sustainable. There is no packaging. So you go in there with your own jar. You know, they put it on the scale, they tear it down to zero, you add your product and you pay for your product. So he's got soaps and beans. And, and so, you know, I've kind of taken it upon myself to go in there, take friends in there and support that concept because uh, it's, a, it's a very, and he's trying to really do the right thing here. So I urge all of you to pop in, have a cup of coffee, buy some beans or some soap or something and you know, check it out and bring a friend. Buy some beans and bring a friend. All right. That's our new slogan. Is that good? All right. Uh, very good. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is... All right. Uh, these are the short-term actions. And the list is get each each month I kind of take off the ones that are green. So next month these, these will go off. So you notice the list is getting shorter. When it gets a little shorter, I'll kind of add the, the mid-range <laughs> action items. So so it becomes less intimidating, I, I think. Uh, so I thought the uh, oh somehow. Did this have, oh, this doesn't have, hold on, let me stop the share and get the one that, let me share the one that I have, which has your names on it. Hold on, let's see. Uh, there we go. So this is the one. You'll notice it has names there. Is this readable? So, so. So, so, let me, let me try this. And do a, how's that? It, it'll do. <laughs> okay. 
So I thought the easiest way to do this, and the last one I kind of twisted arms to get people's names there, is to go down to see um, what's happened. So uh, 2.7, Mr. Olson. Well, I think we already discussed this earlier when we, uh, you know, as far as that we're going to go now take a look at this next set of parcels and that's uh, not going to waste any more time on that one. I've got, I've got continuing action as outlined earlier in the meeting. Whoops. Uh, you are correct. I'm trying to get this down where you can see it. All right. So, yeah, so I will, I will update this based upon what happened at the meeting. Uh, you have the next one as well. Uh, I have taken no further action on this at this time. Um, I, uh, I, it's, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't work on that one. Okay, no, um, that, please that, do not apologize for no, anything. Yeah, don't, no, oh yeah, my you're, God. you're doing yeoman's work, so no, yeah. I, I don't accept that apology. Tom. No, no, no. Uh, this one was a TBD. Um, but, but, <laughs> and, like and yeah. this says, this says, this says, we did, we actually did something else in terms of the storm drain thing. So I think on 216, I'm going to, I'm going to say that we do have an action, some activity. Um, so it's the, what was that? The MS4? Is that the, nope. the, the gang there? Mm -hmm. uh, MS4 participation. And so I will add that. With with uh, Ann and Kristen, and the at the fall uh, visit field trip field trip. Okay, uh, so then we go down to uh, let's see Southern Cross Connect Bray. You're you're tapped on that one. The only thing I could report is. Uh, that uh, Tom mentioned uh, there was about the work that's proceeding that uh, in the rebuilding of the Cutler Middle School, it appears that the town, uh, the Parks and Rec Department has talked to the contractor and uh, work is being done to build a new bridge uh, across the stream, Fishtown Brook. Uh, they've had signs up I've noticed on the road, uh, cautioning people that the trail system through there is temporary closed or under construction. Uh, I, it's on my to-do list to, to walk back there and see where we are with that. But the good news is shovels in the ground finally and work is being done and, and uh, probably shortly it'll be open. All right. So, do you think we can we can kind of put that in there and retire this one? Uh, why don't we go one more month and so forth, so we have something to show? And okay. I'll... All right. Yeah, this time also. Uh, just as a aside, I actually did walk down there last this past week. Uh, the foundations are all built. And so it's just a matter. I think they're prefabbing the the bridge and going to bring and get they have to coordinate getting a crane to put it in place. I think it's going to be one of these drop-in things. The yeah, way it's not that big a space. So you're right. It'd be a prefab, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, uh, but the, the trail, they've expanded the trail system. They've widened it to, to go into the, to the school and stuff. And uh, uh, it's very professional looking. It's going to be, it looks like it's going to be one of a bridge similar to what's at the, at the south end of the, of the cop bar, uh, cop, cop property there. It's with those, you know, uh, big wired stone uh, abutments and stuff in it, so it's very impressive. Yeah, that, that, that is it. Well, that's a big ravine. This is this is kind of like a little brook. So I don't. Know. But anyway, okay. Um, <laughs> One of the problems in the past, when uh, they went before the inland wetlands for approval for a bridge, uh, was the fear of uh, flooding. That if you get a very intense rainstorm. <laughs> water really rips through there and, and they were afraid of uh, in designing the bridge uh, when they came up with some designs you looked at it and said my god that's uh, uh, overbuilt uh, but it but their engineers calculations say the projected flow rate with so much so many inches of rain this is what we need even though okay. it's a small area 
even though it's smaller. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I mean, even even when it cops <laughs> iron, you don't see much water through there. But when it comes through, <laughs> right, it's a, uh, it'll it's take a lot. The bridge out yeah. if you don't if you yeah. don't have a, a strong yeah. bridge. All right, fair enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the nerve. Well, that's fourth quarter, so we won't expect anything there. Those get retired this week or this month. Uh, uh, this one is um, an open space education program. Um, hmm. Thoughts thoughts on that? And I mean, if, have you thought about it? Yeah, I haven't done anything. That was. I, when I put that in, I was hoping to be part of a team. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'll tell you, my, my thought is on it is once we get through, you know, we've gotten the stewardship plans and then actually the stewardship plan provides a good right. basis for doing education. So mm. you know, as part of it, you know, when Michelle talks about having a, an execution plan that, you know, perhaps Michelle, that you know, open space education, you know, might you know, be built on those stewardship plans. There's a lot of good data. Right. There. Absolutely. Yep. So I think that would be, you know, so. That's a longer then, time frame, that item. That's an ongoing. Yeah, that's not short term. term. I agree. No, no, that, that's fair. So 7.3.8 make mid midterm. And, and, and I, be, I volunteer to be, work with Ann on that. And I, I would oh, also yeah. work on that. I'm sorry, that was Kristen and did I hear Michelle on that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I was looking down writing and I thought I heard you. All right, so I'm going to well, change it. Well, the only other female voices here right now, so you heard both of them. Uh, no, 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 no. I try not to be uh, gender <laughs> something. <laughs> There's something there, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 that's that, long term. I think that's that might be something we think about towards next spring when things are in place. You know, everything's yeah. hopefully normal and not we're not in another phase of the pandemic. But then we're having public meetings. You know, there's yeah. Well, I think the, the, the Michelle's plan, which provides a project plan, we can slot it in. I mean, that's really right. mm -hmm. that was really the thought. Uh, so, from the midterm point of view, it at least you know provides the project plan and you slot it in. All right, that's okay. Uh, next is uh, access to well, this one is really the trails the trails uh, booklet. So that's uh, Bray again. It's a work in progress. Unfortunately, the last trails uh, meeting I could not make. So, uh, and my uh, dance card has gotten to be very busy. So this is one that I'm gonna have to uh, contact uh, and, and see where we are with uh, Mark Berry. So it's a work in progress. All right. Um, oh, this one, we, this one, Donna, that can get changed to green and uh, oh, the, this this relates to the one we just said. Well, not quite. This was a volunteer open space education program. I would do the documentary. I did a first pass on that, uh, but it, but similar to the discussion before, I kind of like more professional um, videography. So the one I created was kind of brief. <laughs> um, so it does need does need work. So let me. So that's five point three point three. So that's I really need some videography support uh, to take it beyond my little thing. I think I did. I share that. Yeah, I think I shared that in a prior meeting. Uh, but I'm not too thrilled with it. Um, oh, there we go. Did I share it? It's right here. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, I could I could show the movie, but but uh, eh, let me know. Um, and the last one was uh, Michelle on. Uh, she came up with the the Khan College uh, Goodwood Center program. 
Right. So I talked to them. I think I reported this before, but this definitely isn't short term because basically what the, they are definitely open to us recommending projects for the students. There, there are students that take on projects like this. It's a spring semester program. So sometime around next December, we need to put together a list of potential things to propose to them. And, and what I'm thinking is that, that this, this master list of things we have to do, we can identify possible things on there. There'll be student projects or come up with separate things. And this is, again, working with Bray with the trails. Um, if, if there's, you know, he may know of things also. So basically this is, is, you know, sometime in the November, December timeframe, we need to come up with the ideas for what we want to present to the um, Khan College students. I don't have anything about the UConn project though. No, I was doing that one. So I have reached out and talked to them. Uh, there is an interest in continuing it, but their thought was it's kind of what you said. It's later as part of the next semester. So it would be a fall type of thing. And similarly is, is I've been, I had asked the, the town staff if they had some suggestions and sustainability committee, they had some suggestions. Um, so right now it's, it's. You know, I mean, the one that's come back so far has been carbon sequestration. But um, so that's also work in process and a little later in the year. Um, but the interest is there and similar to what Michelle just said, you need to come up with an abstract that says, here's what the project is, right? So there's a willingness to do it, an interest in doing it. Um, and so that's ahead, Tom. That I'm sorry, Tom. You had your hand up. Yeah, I. You know, I didn't have anything. I think we're done on those. I just wanted to go back to five one five. I'm not done yet. I have one more little okay. thing, quick though. Okay. So, so um, this is this is somewhat related, possibly. So I, I just found out um, a couple weeks ago. There's another organization called um, Engineers for a Sustainable World, and it's it's mostly. Um, college student projects doing engineering projects for, that has sustainability associated with them. And, and there, I, I may possibly end up on the board of directors of that organization. So um, there's a potential for those for that overlap. And I don't know how much our commission will be overlapped with sustainability because I don't know what the projects look like yet. But just I'm just kind of letting you guys know that there's potential for another possible um, connection. All right. Well, is our congratulations in order? Not yet. <laughs> okay, not yet. All right, we'll we'll hold off on that then. Um, all right, back to Tom. Now I'm done. Yep. Yep. On five one five, this as it said here that the the section went back was renamed as Woodcrest. If you go back to the the matrix that we talked about the, uh, at the beginning of the, the stewardship plan discussion, uh, that Woodcrest one it says it's holding uh, to combine with Lanthier, uh, uh, and that was being upheld because of the your discussions with the town manager. Is it we're going to combine all that into a single uh, 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 lamp here plus this one we're going to get combined into a single uh, um, workbook. All right. All right. I'll take the other the thing is I have a picture. If you want to give me screen sharing, I can show you what the uh, Crosstown Trail behind Cutler School thing is here. Right. Let me share all this right. with you. Okay. Um, screen two. Oh, wait, I got the wrong chair. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a nice picture. I'm impressed. Yeah, that's amazing. I did, and the trail goes where on that time? It yeah. Like <laughs> Upper school? Yeah, uh, you can see the little uh, uh, picture over there. As far as there's a little bridge back in here that uh, is what is what's being replaced, but these what this what's going to be on uh, uh, what I mean, is he talking we're, about? No, yeah. I know we're it's seeing fun. we're seeing your screenshot. It's your screen uh, background, I think. Okay. Oh, sorry. There's a lighthouse or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a lighthouse. There, there we go. We go. <laughs> <laughs> little lighthouse. Okay. Oh, okay. So they they made so, it a lot bigger than they're placing it with this yeah. thing. So. Yep. Okay. Okay. That'll be cool. I mean, that was kind of messy going through there. As I recall, <laughs> this is there. a big project. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, 
The other thing that I had, uh, how are we running? It's seven o'clock. The other thing is, uh, Tom, you attended the Bike and Pedestrian Summit. Uh, yes, I did. Um, yeah. and, and it it got published. I mean, like, I got to think it was like a day or two ago. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. You know, maybe you could just give a quick summary of. Well, the, the biggest thing is that they were pro uh, proposing that uh, an update to the plan because it's fairly dated right now, and that uh, they were just looking for uh, principally for uh, letting people know that they were going that they're out trying to get grants to go do that with it. Uh, and so they were just looking for any kind of comments and inputs, which they, they did. The, the, there was a number of people uh, that were in attendance. Uh, everyone was supportive of that. They, if, you, if you go forward with an update, that they would be willing to participate in that effort. And I think that's a, a quick summary of it. Uh, they were just basically uh, surveying for general community interest uh, from various organizations, which they did get, and they got commitments. Uh, to, be, to uh, continue to go, go forward with the, uh, with the uh, development of an updated plan. But they did not have a timeline of when that was going to happen, it was pending a, uh, get, receiving some grants. All right. Uh, did, uh, did that go out to everybody, Bruce? I'm trying to remember. Did you publish that? No, I, I don't even know if I saw that. No, I didn't okay. do anything with that. It came, oh, okay, because it came from Cindy Berry uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, let me forward that to Bruce, and then he can forward it to everyone else. And I mean, there's a big, long summary in there. That's why I, th I thought it was fairly, fairly extensive summary. All right, so you guys, you guys can, can get that and look, look at it. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of uh, activity going on there. Um, all right, that gets us to the end of our formal presentation. Good time management today. Oh, Anne. Yeah, I just um, I didn't. I guess I didn't have my name against very many short-term goals, uh, but one I, I do have an update on the Gunji Womp. I had my name on that one and trying to find out what was going on with the property. And maybe this is something that folks already know, but um, as Bray pointed out, you have to sign up to go on a guided um, walk, which I did uh, June 25th. And it, I highly recommend it if people haven't done it. Uh, and the leader was Al Brown from the uh, the nature center and at the end I just kind of asked him what was going on with the property and he said that the state archaeologist is going to be evaluating the property uh, this fall and then I think we after that um, they're going to make a decision on what to do with the property that was his and I asked him who was the best person to stay in touch with on what was going on and he said that it was perfectly fine for me to uh, just communicate with him. So. All right. Uh, do you recall what that action number was again? This. No. Right, I can right. get it to you. All right. I'll, I don't I'll remember the number. Okay. Uh, very good. Thank you. Um, oh, I was back to saying that I was the end of the point that. I'm sorry, the end of our agenda, we still have report of town staff. Oh. <laughs> so so uh, Bruce, I will, I will turn it back over to you. Sure. Um, yeah, so the first thing we need to talk about is how we would like to conduct meetings moving forward because uh, we are having in-person meetings now, um, but our department is, um, well, I guess the town is still in the works of <clears throat> converting the rooms to be able to accommodate hybrid meetings. Because we have um, found, especially with planning and zoning commissions and inland wellness meetings, that it's it's been really good for public communication and um, public engagement. We've had a lot more attendance. So we're trying to move forward with a hybrid model for those meetings because that's what planning and zoning commission like. Um, so that's what we're doing as a department, but 
for you guys, I guess it's up to you. If you'd like to have hybrid meetings moving forward, if you'd like to just have in-person meetings, um, however you want to do it, it's completely up to you. You're, you're not one of the, uh, the um, you know, decision bodies like the Planning and Zoning Commission. So it's open uh, for discussion. All right. Uh, so as part of that, let me just do a quick so the next, our next meeting is August 2nd. So I guess, let me just ask folks, would everyone be able to attend an in-person meeting on August 2nd? Not okay, sure. Can we do general minute. comments first? Cause yeah. I, Okay, I was just trying to get a, a test case here on <laughs> availability, but okay. So Kristen had her hand up first. Then. Michelle was first. Oh, Michelle was first. Sorry. All right. So yes, yeah. Michelle. So I would I would prefer that we go hybrid if possible for two reasons. One is the um, public in, input, but also when when we're traveling, sometimes we can be on the meeting even though we're not in Groton. So it'd be nice to have that hybrid option if at all possible. All right, Kristen. Yeah, I was going to say that I kind of prefer the old model where we're in a room together and there, you know, we keep accurate minutes and the public is welcome to attend in person if they prefer. But, um, you know, maybe if somebody's absent, they can just zoom in. But, you know, to always have everything recorded, I think would be, I don't know, just not, not constricting, let's say. And secondly, um, I, for one, cannot attend on August 2nd, either remotely or in person. So, you know, it's, it's a busy time of year. That was why I was asking. Anne? Uh, I, I really like the hybrid version, um, or I, I wouldn't be on today. I'm in California, in Mojave, in 109 degree weather. <laughs> Melting. Are you sure you want to be there? <laughs> what was that? I said, are you sure you want to be there? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but it makes it possible to participate. Uh, if I were in town, I would come in person. All right, Bray, I think you had your... Uh, the one thing that I've enjoyed about the, uh, the Zoom meetings is that we, in our regular meeting, we've always talked about, we'd like to see maps. We'd like to see uh, mm, yeah. the ability that we have here where you can call something up and I think it adds so much to our conversation because uh, it, it enables us to, uh, for all of us to see it and formulate our own questions or support for it. And it's just in, in our past, in our old meeting room at the annex, uh, there, there isn't any access to a, a screen on the wall where we could have either the agenda or, you know, uh, we could call up some other things perhaps on there uh, the way you've been doing it. Actually, uh, I so, thought, didn't we add that though? I thought, right, this is Michelle, I thought we did have that. We started using yeah. the screen, didn't we? Yeah, there is a screen there, but yeah. it's it's uni, well, it's limited. In other words, it's not a Zoom thing where multiple people can share things from right. their data best. It really was from, let's say, Bruce's laptop. So, right. so I think Bray's right, it's, it's more flexible. And I think that's the purpose of a hybrid meeting, right? Is that right. Mm -hmm. anybody can bring their laptop or participate in the laptop and, and still do what we're doing. Uh, so, Kristen, hold on one second. I think everyone has talked once except Tom. Uh, and then we'll I'm come back for a second. On the 2nd of August, and I prefer, I think, having the hybrid and also having a recorded just from my, just this last month, it was very helpful for me to be able to go back, take a look, watch the, the, the proceedings for the two and a half hours you guys were dedicated last time, and for me to get right up to feel I was up, still up to speed to come into this meeting. So I, I really like the, the fact of having the hybrid and I'm fully vaccinated and ready to come in and, and go forward and I'll be there on the second. All right, uh, Kristen, round two. Um, yeah, I just, I guess I'm curious what, when we talk about a hybrid meeting, what are we talking about? So we're all sitting in a room, the one person who is absent, do we see them on a screen or, um, you know, do they, like, is there a screen sitting on the table and we talk to them? How does that work? 
Um, well, what it's, I mean, a lot, a lot of these are kind of, we're still working through it. I mean, that's, that's kind of the reason why we're, we're hybrid now, because this is what we're kind of working on. Like, how do these meetings actually work? But we are, we, we are in the process. I mean, we have a camera set up in the room. And so we'll be able to see everybody having a discussion at the table. There's pretty good microphones in there as well that pick up a lot of the um, conversation, almost all of it. Um, so there'd be a screen um, in front of that table in CR3. Um, so if someone was zooming in, they could be on the screen and see us. The, the challenge is talking loud enough so everyone can hear you via Zoom. And also, you know, rem remembering that there's somebody on the wall that's also engaged in the, in the conversation. So it, it can really go a lot of different ways. I mean, it could go, you know, some people are participating remotely and they're up on the screen. Um, it could go that, you know, everybody has their computers in front of them. And then, you know, we just kind of interact through the computer and using Zoom that way. Or, you know, you can just come in person and not have a computer and we can try to share as much as we can on the screen in front of us. But I, I, I and I think that's going to be much more um, like to pray to your point. I think we're going to be able to show a lot more on our screen in the room than we used to in the back. I think it may be pretty similar to sharing the screen the way we do now. And then everybody can, everybody can see it above us, but it, it's not fully tested yet see how everything works with the hybrid model like that. So these are just kind of ideas and how we're thinking we're going to be able to work through it and what it's going to look like. So. All right. I'm, I'm uh, leaning, I, you know, my, I'm in favor of the hybrid model because it provides the best of both worlds. Um, I kind of, I kind of like being in person because <laughs> I haven't seen you guys in two years in person. <laughs> but, so, Hold on. Let me turn this off. All right. All right. Um, okay, Bruce. So I think if the town is ready, it sounds like we're ready to do a hybrid meeting and see how it works. So I, I think that it's safer for us to do a hybrid than other folks since we're not a regulatory meeting. I, I mean, so it's actually, we're probably a pretty good test case. I'm just throwing that out. Um, that you know you, you won't get into legal issues if something screws up <laughs> from from that point of view. So I I would go for a hybrid meeting on the second and let's let's see how it uh, how it goes. Is that is so that, you can uh, attend if you'd like. If you don't, if you don't yeah. want to attend, yeah. you can just you can stay home on your computer and zoom in, and we'll have the capabilities to do that. Yep. All right. Uh, other topics, Bruce. I got one for you. Um, you, you had, I was going to, yeah, you can ask the question, but that's where I was going. So the, there was a SCARA, um, there was a memo that, that Larry had forwarded to John Reiner um, on SCARA, the composting facility, and kind of um, asked for our opinion on, you know, what we would like as a town to have, kind of adopt a policy on composting moving forward. Um, yeah, it, and Larry asked, I don't know, Larry, do you have it to share? It might be kind of easier to go with that. I don't know if it, it wasn't in the packet, so. Uh, let me quick find it now. I should have had it teed up. No, I'm sure. Give me a second. Yeah, me too. Um, oh, damn. All right, let me try it this way. Give me a second. Let's see. Uh, why am I not finding that? My filing system is not the best. Uh, I, I, I can I can just read my notes here if that this will work. So the, the first um, recommendation that you had for the town to do is to try to um, coordinate a presentation with David Aldridge from SCARA to present to the town council and the RTM sometime in the fall. 
um, just to kind of go over the potential benefits for um, the town of Groton, which is spanning an organic waste initiative that, that what we discussed at the last meeting. Um, and and we, we can definitely facilitate that and, and get um, SCARA on the agenda for one, for one of the council meetings. Um, well, it's probably about two months out. So September, October, that time frame. That would work for us, so we can we can put together that and kind of coordinate that if um, whenever whenever David is available. And the second was the second recommendation. Second recommendation was establish an organic waste reduction program for Groton as part of the town's office of sustainability. So as you all may know, we are in the process of, well, there's been a position being approved for a sustainability manager and we will create an office of sustainability with the town. Um, we haven't yet advertised for that. It hasn't been created. So our recommendation for that would be, you know, you know, thank you that that's a good, uh, it's a good recommendation and we can pass that along to the, to the office and, and um, the, the, the person that is in that position when they're hired, I think, that's kind of, it, it would kind of be premature to do it now because we're gonna have somebody starting there probably within the next six months, I would say. Um, I think the point on that one would be, does the job description include things like that? I mean, I understand that objectives versus execution are two different things, but it, you know, is that something that would be a reasonable objective as part of that office? Not really for me to make that decision. I mean, I, I mean, there's going to be a job description. There's going that's to be a list. Why I asked. That's why I asked. For this. Yeah, so. no, no, I, I know. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't have that answer. I, I don't know what the first thing on the docket for the sustainability manager is going to be, but I'm sure this is something within their purview that they'll consider doing. All right. Let me ask this question. I get. I'll get to you, Tom. Can we then see a draft copy of the job description? You, you could, you could, uh, I, I don't know about that. You can definitely see the approved one when it's advertised. <laughs> are we not an advisory commission? Well, you are That's to certain extents, but when it comes to HR creating job descriptions, I don't even know if we're that much of an advisory. Our office, I mean, it's just the way it's conducted. Larry? Yeah, Tom. On that particular issue, the, the, the draft job description was developed by the, sustain, the Sustainability Task Force and, and, and submitted as part of their budget proposal when, uh, for the 22 budget. And, and so I, did, I do recall seeing that. I haven't been able to quickly pull it up here. But that job description exists already and was submitted as part of the, as the, document, the back of documentation to the 22 the town budget. Um, because that, that the funding was included in the in the budget request. All right, uh, good. I, I forgot that. So I, I, I yeah, I remember the recommendation. I didn't see the the task list. Okay, so we we'll go we'll go back and look at that. Well, it was a suggested draft, right? Well, it was well, a draft. A, it was a draft proposal from the yeah. task force to uh, to go through. It, it was turned over to the HR folks. Mr. Nagami, yeah. I believe, has the, the lead on that as a as a as a principal person for the uh, the HR uh, hiring. But I think it's still I don't believe he has taken it and presented the final one to, to get a final approval for the town council for hiring. All right. Um, yeah, to get dig that up, Tom, I'd that'd be. I'll, I'll be happy to look at that and then provide my edits in as comments on the draft, on the job description draft proposal, which I'm sure would be welcome input to the town staff. The smile booth. <laughs> okay. Um, that's the, that's our agenda. So uh, are there any other new business topics that anyone would like to raise? All right, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Move that we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor?
All right, another unanimous vote. And uh, for most of you, we, we may be able to see each other in person on August 2nd. I'm sorry to be missing it. I, I have invited guests. They're here for two nights only, so I can't duck out for one of the nights. But otherwise, I'd happily see everybody. All right. All right. Uh, very good. So thanks, guys. So Bruce, I think you can uh, end the meeting. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. You too.